So, we're going to talk about forgiving and fighting the poverty mindset. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our uh, trespass. We forgive our those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our, trust, our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Lord, just, just, Lord today, O oh God, as you have been preparing our heart, um, as you have been readjusting our mind and our daily pr- plans, O oh God, um, Lord, I just, I'm grateful for your faithfulness, O oh God. I'm grateful for how holy you are, how righteous you are how perfect you are, and how forgiving you are, how loving you are. Lord, we thank you, O God, for giving us joy, O God. We thank you, O God, for giving us strength. We thank you, O God, for giving us peace. So, Lord, as we uh, go over this message today, O Lord, that that we're lining up for the things that you have us be, um, especially in this this day and age with what's going on in, in this world, O Father. There's been a, a definitely an attack on the body of Christ um, and on the, you know on the world as well uh, to really push and push an agenda of uh, dismissing the identity of who you have created us to be, uh, male and female. You want females to be males and males to be females to have a choice to who you were created to be. But God, we know, oh Father, that you created us, oh God, not just to be uh, 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 be able to have a choice of what we are, oh God, but you created us who you are, who you've created us to be. We're a male, we're a male. We're a female, we're a female, oh God. Lord Jesus, I'm just coming against the hand of the enemy, oh God, that would just try to uh, hinder and, and and stop people from being in their, in their right assignment, oh Father. Oh, God, because those kids, those children, uh, the human beings, oh, God, their assignments on their lives, the, there's missions that we must complete, oh, God. So, Lord, we just bind up the hand of the enemy, oh, God. Lord, um, I, I pray, oh, Father, that you will get some people to stand up and speak. I know these things has to come to pass in order for you to come. But, Lord Jesus, like, it's just really mind-boggling to see the church is silent on this. Um and no one is speaking out. Um, it's, it's, it's no longer, it's, it's not a, pertaining to us, so we don't speak on it. <coughs> now nah, we still speak on it. We speak truth in season and out of season. Lord, we pray for our nation. Heal us, O oh God. Lord, I, I pray, O oh Father, that you would raise up a standard against the enemy, O oh Father. And because we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. They're just hosts. For what for to, to do the most, <laughs> but Lord God, you uh, you've given us to be able to do greater things as well, and we will stand for that in truth, in Jesus' name, Amen. Um, so forgiving and fighting the poverty mindset, you know, um, it's it's. I wanted to call this message. Um, and I still may preach a message on this one day. Um, but holiness is still right, but so is forgiveness. A lot of times as Christians, um, we live according to the rudiments of this world. Um, when I say the the rudiments, the rules, the traditions of this world, um, and we live according to God's law, his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Um, we talk about how holiness is, 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 is without no man should see the Lord. And we know that the reason why Jesus Christ died on the cross is so that we could be holy. Because we were incapable of being holy uh, without 
the washing of the blood, the cleansing, um, without the offer of a sacrificial lamb or offering of a sacrificial sheep. Um, so there was things that that we had to do in order to be holy. But now that Jesus has died on the cross as the sacrificial lamb, and he rose from the dead with all power in his, in his hands from heaven and earth, um, there's not really, <laughs> I mean, all you need is the blood of Jesus and have faith and believe, but, you know, and you do keep his commandments, which is good, but a lot of times people, we keep God's commandments and we live a righteous life, a self-righteous life, not even a Christ-righteous life, because we come up with traditions that are men and not of God, and it may be for a season that God may tell us not to do certain things, um, and we just take on in that and try to apply it to every single person's life and put on uh, more weight on them than they actually have. I, I grew up in a, in a ch- uh, church in a time where, you know, we were coming out where it says, you know, it was um, a sin for a woman to wear pants. And and skirts and different skirts being so short or, you know, your skirt must be long to your ankles and, you know, and that's not what is necessarily is going to save a person. You know, um, yeah, you don't want women walking around, you know, two short shorts and, and short skirts and stuff like that. But like wearing pants and stuff does not make you save or make you no less save. Um, you know, and, and that's something that, that I, I, you know, I had to learn from. And I felt like I was kind of um, it was kind of uh, tortured <laughs> um, and engraved in our minds um, and is and is wrong. And that's the type of tradition of holiness that <laughs> that's like man made. Um, I know it was a season in time in my life where God told me I couldn't go to the movies, but now I go to the movies. I got a, I got a pass where I can go three times a week. See any movie I want, you know. But uh, there was a season, a time where God wouldn't let me go, but that wasn't for everybody. That was just for me. That's what God was doing with me. Whatever in that season that He was preventing from being planted, or uh, He knew I enjoyed going to movies or something, I had to sacrifice. Either or, it was worth it because God wanted me to do it. I'm not going to sit here and apply sit to say, oh, I, I can't go to movies. You should go to movies because that's not God. <laughs> like, um, you know, we live our lives uh, each accordingly. Excuse me, what God has given us and what measure of faith that we have and we grow. That's what the Bible says. We go faith to faith. We go to different levels to different levels, you know, um, but the one thing I feel like that hinders Christians nowadays and hinder us nowadays and stop us from really getting the blessings from God is that when people do us wrong or do us dirty it's okay to say that they did you wrong, did you dirty, that was wrong but the one thing we're not doing we're not forgiving as we should and in order for God to really rain down on us and really perform the things that he wants to do, we got to what? We have to forgive. Um, we have to forgive from every which way. I mean, it's okay to be angry. You can be angry and still be forgiven. But when you come to a place where you're holding you harboring that stuff inside of you. Weeks on weeks, years on years, decades on decades, you are only hurting and hindering yourself. Some of us we live around people that are just low down and dirty. And it's a shame. They are they're low down and dirty. And it doesn't necessarily make them right for them being low down and dirty. Cheating people, stealing, and doing things that they ain't supposed to be doing. But that's just a part of the world we live in. We're called to be examples. Even amongst the uh, people who claim to be Christians. 
that are involved in witchcraft and manipulation and you know operating as a unit for Jezebel or operating in the Jezebel spirit and not the Holy Spirit. But we still ought to still be forgiven. Um because despite of all, we all had our, our, our struggles. We have always had our issues where we need to be forgiven. Right? And what happened if God would not have forgiven us? We've all come and fallen short of the glory of God. But we all sit there and act like when a person needs to be forgiven, we already forgave them. And a lot of times, we haven't. Because that person might do something again. And those emotions, those feelings that they, what they did from you will rise back up out of your heart. And sometimes act out in the flesh. When you really get down to the matter of it all, are you forgiven? I know um, I prayed for somebody and um, and they were hobbled over and they was dealing with different things, lupus and stuff. And, and we prayed for her and God definitely did deliver her. But before she could get delivered, I asked her, I said, hey, is there anything or anyone that you're harboring any unforgiveness to? Because a lot of times sickness in the body, cancers, arthritis, um, lupus, like all kinds of stuff is held on to unforgiveness. That's a nasty sin. Um, and I asked her. And I said, anybody do something wrong to you, real bad to you? Because at first they said, she said, no, no, no one's did anything wrong to me. And I have, I'm not holding <coughs> on any forget unforgiveness. But when you, you, a lot of times we have things that we're harboring inside of our heart that's, that's hidden. That we don't even know that's there. And I began to ask, her, anybody do something really bad to you? And then she began to say, different things, my boyfriend did such and such, da 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 da. And that was the root cause of it. See, the devil put people in your life that will hurt you. And just like when your body get hurt, you know, you burn your hand on fire, you pull back. It's the same thing when you get hurt emotionally from somebody and they hit you emotionally, you pull back. Your initial reaction is not to go closer to them unless you go hit them. But your initial reaction is to pull back because it hurt it. And sometimes we pull back and we never come back to where we were because we never really forgave. Because of the pain, we don't want to really revisit that. But the one thing is, you know, holiness is still right, but so is forgiveness. The church talk about holiness so much, but we walk around just bitter. And we and we bitter, we end up trying to bite other people. We become bitter bugs. And we begin to bite other people and make them better because we're better. And it's just be a duplication process because it's a seed, time, and harvest. <laughs> you know, the same way you put in your financials, the seed, time, harvest. Well, when the devil put, like, you get bit by bitterness, that seed is in you and, it's t- and, it, res- and it comes in time. And it also produces a harvest. Not for, from God, but a harvest that will be something that is not. I know um, um, when I, uh, I know I'm called to be a pastor. I know I'm called to be a pastor. I know I'm called to be a leader and different things like that. And I know I was under a leader that uh, was bitter. And they uh, were held back in their ministry by the person who was over them. And that person told them that they really wouldn't be what they were and what they had become today. And they did the exact same thing that was done to them to other people. They did it to my family. They did it to me. And um, I remember early on when I was saved that I was able to talk to God. And that was something that stood out. It was like the same thing that was being done to him was being done to us. And that was the bitten biting of the bitter bug. 
And then you have a whole congregation full of better people. But yet still, we all jumping up and down and we praising and worshiping God. But we must look in the mirror. We must look in the mirror. We must be able to look and see who we are and see what's in our eye and remove it. Forgiveness is one of the things that holds us back from our blessings. It holds us back from our blessings. Um, <clears throat> Job chapter 42 verse 10 says, uh, and, Job, and Jehovah turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And Jehovah gave Job twice as much as he had before. And Jehovah turned captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And Jehovah gave Job twice as much as he had before. The one thing about forgiveness is it will liberate you. The one thing about unforgiveness, it will slave you. enslave you. It will be imaginary bars that you won't see, but you will live out and act out. And I can't tell you, I know people now to this day still dealing with unforgiveness. And they'll tell you, I'm not dealing with unforgiveness. I'll be looking straight at them like, you are. I won't tell them that, but <laughs> I'll be like, I'm looking at my eyes like, you are. Because... You you think that you're over that. You think that over what a parent has done or has said or something to you, but you're really not. Because your actions are showing and it's setting forth for what, what it is. I don't have to look at the root to know what the fruit looks like, where the fruit comes from. I see the fruit before I see the root. But anyway, um... Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 through 15. It says, And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and power and glory forever. For if, amen. If, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your, heavenly, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now this is the part of the Lord's Prayer. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. So as we're asking God to forgive us our debts, the things that we've done, we also need to forgive our debt to us. Why? Because it says it right next to us, it says, and do not let us lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Why is it we need to be delivered from the evil one? Because the evil one presents the temptation that from the harm, the harbor of bitterness that will lead us into, into temptation. What is that temptation? Not to forgive, to hold that against that person. Um, because what happens? It gives you to temptation, and it delivers you to the evil one. So we have to be delivered from the evil one, and the only way we be delivered from, delivered from the evil one is to forgive, and be forgiven. We all want to be holy, 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 righteous. I want to be perfect. But we, in the church, we're not perfect. What makes us perfect is the words of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by the words of our testimony. And we're perfect by the blood of the Lamb. Which is Jesus. It just takes one drop and it cleans your whole body. <coughs> we all have had things we've kept in the secret chambers of our heart some things we don't want it to be touched because it's too painful and it brings back bad memories but today is okay the Holy Spirit is here to rid you of all your hurt 
heartache and pain and give you release so you can give to God to release it so you will be released and your rain from heaven can be released okay uh, we're gonna that's why I'm preaching first is because we're gonna stop we're gonna get into the secret places of our heart the things that we're harboring and let the Holy Spirit deal with us. I can't deal with you. If I'm dealing with my own. And I can't deal with you. Because there's only some things that only God can touch. There's only some things the Holy Spirit can heal and convict of. I'm only here to bring the truth. After the truth is here. And it's spoken. The Holy Spirit will convict. And that's all it is to it. I can't get mad at you. But all I can say is that I trust the Holy Spirit. That he knows what he's doing. And that he's going to heal. So he's going to heal your heartache. He's going to heal your hurts and your pain. This is something that guys. has actually been dealing with me for a couple weeks now. Maybe a month. Um, you know. Um, about forgiveness. Um, why? Because the Lord. Wants to give you. A double portion. He wants to give you better than what you had. He wants to take the dry ground and make it an oasis. He wants to take your life and give you a new life. He wants to bring you from out of prison into freedom. He wants to liberate you. He wants to set you free. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you love. He wants to show you. He wants to shower you with his presence. He wants to shower you with his 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 love, his his joy. That's eternal. We talk I've been talking about prayer and I really do I see I see uh, a difference in every single person um in their prayer life and it's increasing. Uh we're going to get to where God wants us to be. And we're going to continue to grow faith to faith. But one of the things, before, so so that we can release the blessings of the Lord. And get a double portion. We have to what? We have to forgive. We have to conquer these things. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39, says, Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, we are more than conquerors. We can conquer our forgiveness. Let's hear your neighbor say, we can conquer our forgiveness. And we will conquer our forgiveness. (laughs) Because not even the thing that's supposed to take us out of here. Nor the things that's going to give us life. Or the angels or principalities or powers or things present or things to come. Whether it's high, whether it's, it has grown as an ugly gross on your face or gross on your heart. Or whether it's deep down rooted that you can't even see it because it's been there for so long. No thing... Nothing will stop you from getting free. Nor any other thing that will be created. Even if that person will come and do something again to you. And try to conjure up those old feelings because they're not happy. None of the calluses of the heart will be there. Because God is going to touch your heart. He's gonna forgive. He's gonna forgive, and he's gonna bring a new heart to you. Don't let because of the iniquity, because of the the uh, of other people doing something, 
to you that your heart wax cold. God's going to give you a new heart and a new mind, a new spirit, a new life. He's going to give you a new life mind. Amen. If we can conquer our struggles through Jesus, surely we can conquer our forgiveness as well. Go back to Job 42, and it says, Then Job, verses 1 through 17, Then Job answered Jehovah and said, I know that thou canst do all, that thou can do us all things, and that no purpose of thine can be restrained. Who is this that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I uttered that which I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I had heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Wherefore I bore myself and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after Jehovah had spoken these words unto Job, Jehovah said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has. Now therefore, take unto you seven bulls, bullocks, and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job shall pray for you. For him I will accept that I deal not with you after your folly. For you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite, went and did according as Jehovah commanded them. And Jehovah accepted Job. And Jehovah turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, and Jehovah gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him unto, unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat, eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him. Bemoaned me they they came together and he was, you know, sorrowful and and try to comfort him. And they comfort him concerning all the evil that Job had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And every one a ring of gold. So Jehovah blessed the latter end of Job. More than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels. And a 1,000 yokes of oxen and a thousand uh, she asses he had also seven sons three daughters and he called them called the name of the first Jemima Jemima uh, and the second Keziah and the third Karen and all and in all the land, there were no women so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. And after his, this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being, uh, being old and full of days. Now we know about the story of Job. Job went through a lot. He was a... He was a righteous man. He was a man that that loved God, that followed him and kept his commandments. And 
you know, he was doing everything right. He was offering the right sacrifices. He was wise. He was able to judge situations. People would come to him with problems. But it was one day the devil decided he wanted to seek out Job. And he told God, he says, if you allow me to touch him, touch his, his families and his belongings, that what would happen? That he would curse you and die. And God said, okay, go ahead and do it. Touch him. He won't curse me and die. And he began to touch his family. People died. Buildings collapsed. His his riches was turning over. His his oxes, his bulls, his sheep began to die off. Everything that he had began to die off. Yet still, Job wouldn't curse God. Job, the devil came to God again and says, Look, he didn't curse you because he only had things. But if you let me touch his skin, his bones, his flesh, he'll curse you and die. And God says, Go here to touch him, but don't take his life. He won't curse me and die. And the devil touched him. He had boils all over his skin, so he was stinking, he had an odor. He had to live with a wife that would that would look at him look and say, "Oh man," even to the point where she's just like, "Man, why don't you just curse God and die?" And Job was like, "No, God's been too wonderful to me. Through my whole life, He's been wonderful to me. And I'm gonna curse God because I'm gonna ex- I can't accept the calamity that has taken place in my life, but I can accept the good that happened before the calamity." No, I won't curse God and die. Then you had his friends come and look at him, and they began to speak about all the stuff he did wrong, all the stuff they thought about him that was in their heart. Thought he was a good two shoes. Um, he was an overachiever because he was so blessed. But now things are going wrong, and that stuff is what really got God angry because it was people that were speaking. Uh, wrong as if it was God. They were prophet lying and not prophesying. They were procrastinating and not, pros- not, not prosecuting. And not uh, claiming and speaking the truth. So that made God angry. There's a lot of people that speak untruth about us. And God, that makes God angry. There's a lot of things people do to us that's not from God. And there's even sometimes pastors that do things and it's not from God. That makes God angry. But God allows it to go on. To really show what's at the center of and what's at the truth of your heart. He allows the things that were buried deep down in your heart to be riddled and shaken. So they may flow to the surface of your heart. And he may see and you may see. What needs to be corrected? Is we gonna correct it so God can perfect it, or are we gonna protect it and let God be neglected? Um, but either way, we need God. So Job decided, because he know he do nothing wrong, to the point where he got mad at God. He questioned God so much, and he realized he's like, man, look, I was wrong in that. I ask you for forgiveness, God. Now, Job didn't know what happened. He didn't know the devil came to uh, God and tried to tempt him. He didn't know that. But yet still, he was like, Lord, forgive me for me questioning you and assuming because I was out of my own righteousness. And God forgave him. But what the greatest thing was that I want everybody to get from here was Was that he didn't receive double portion until he prayed for his friends. And a sacrifice was offered. (coughs) Which represented forgiveness. Right? That's what what sacrifice. Because you sacrifice your emotions, your feelings. For them. We all have somebody like that in our life. And we have more than one. And even after we forgive this one, it's going to be another one that comes. It's going to be people that are our friends, people that are our family, 
People that we don't know really doesn't bother us that much. Because we don't have a relationship with them. But yet it's still, they will still try to cause an offense. People will blow their horn at you when you are in the right. I know one time I'm sitting at the red light, the guy blow his horn. I'm not running the red light. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I'm not running the red light. No, absolutely not. Yeah, you going to pay for my ticket? No. They're going to try to offend you. But it wasn't until he prayed for his friend that God gave Job twice as much. God turned his cap- the captivity of Job into a celebration, into a nativity scene, to a place where it's a new beginning. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And pardoned his garments among them that cast lots. Even Jesus had to forgive before he can go up to glory, before he can die on the cross, go down into Abraham's bosom, resurrect everybody who was down there, and then turn around, let them walk around for a while before he ascends into the heavens to glory. From glory to glory. So that what does that mean for us? That means we have to forgive. Luke 24 verse 25, 26 is, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? He had to suffer these things and enter into his glory. Look, sometimes we have to go through valleys and we have to go through uh, trials and tribulations before we go to a higher height and a deeper depth, before we receive what's due ours. We have to go through. We have to allow God to take us through the process so we can be perfected. We need to be mirror images of God. We need to forgive like Christ. You want your blessing? You want a new job? You want you want you want more money in your pocket, your finances blessed? You want a new place? To rent or whatever? You want a spouse? Forgive. Unforgiveness is a sticky sin that hides itself to pride. And hides like an ugly troll because it doesn't want to be, it doesn't want it does. It wants to be attached to you, because it does. It would without you, it would die. It wants to hold up your blessings that God has for you. It wasn't until Job forgave that he received double. It wasn't until Jesus forgave that he was going up to glory. We've come this far. We've come this far to be held. We uh, to be held back from God for what God has for you. We didn't come this far to be held back from what God has for us for the blessings. Your prayer life is up, great. Your reading the word life is up, great. Your meditation life is up, great. But it doesn't mean anything if we don't forgive and move on. Because that is what's going to bring prosperity. I heard you read in my spirit. Just over this mountain. Just over this mountain is a blessing. That will blow your mind. If you only forgive. Just over this mountain. 
There's restorations. There's great riches. There is God's new provision, which is far greater than what you lost and what others have done to you. There is a double portion from the Lord. Look to your neighbor say, there is a double portion from the Lord. And I'm going to walk in it. Amen.